This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett. That's the name Alex. The name of the show is The Ramble. We'll be here until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States and the Republican Convention is in full swing. of the Republican convention in San Francisco is reached with the arrival of President and Mrs. Eisenhower. They are greeted at their hotel by a wildly cheering crowd. Many had waited all day for a glimpse of the chief executive who arrived a day earlier than planned. An air of expectancy hangs over the Cow Palace as the time for the chief business of the convention, the nominations, approaches. Congressman Joe Martin takes over the gavel as permanent chairman from Senator Noland and gets a wild ovation from the floor, which rises to a deafening crescendo as former President Hoover is escorted to the rostrum. The elder statesman tells the convention that its greatest task is to make a resounding declaration of principles of American life. The next convention cheers are reserved for former Governor Dewey and presidential aspirant in 1948. He tells the delegates that America's best hope for peace depends on President Eisenhower's re-election. However, the high point in the entire convention comes when the president's name is placed in nomination by Congressman Halleck. I now place in nomination as the candidate of the Republican Party for President of the United States the name of the most widely beloved, the most universally respected, the most profoundly dedicated man of our times, Dwight David Eisenhower. This is what is known as acclamation. The president's nomination is followed shortly by that of Richard Nixon as his running mate. Picture of delegates who see eye to Ike. One flying saucer with airplane attached. No cause for excitement. It's got nothing to do with Martians. A saucer didn't capture the airplane. It's more the other way around. A Navy super constellation. Yeah, that's it. We thought we would play that for you. That was an old newsreel of uh, the uh, convention back in uh, 1956. Now, why did I choose that particular thing, and why did I why did I choose it to play? Uh, because it was 1956, and it was the convention in San Francisco, California. Does that give you a hint? Well, I of course I was in San Francisco when that convention took place. When that Republican convention took place, excuse me, my eye is trash tonight, just tearing terribly. See, and it's red and everything. Anyway. Where are we? God, I'm looking. It looks terrible. I should not even do a show tonight. Anyway, uh, the, the reason why I picked that particular one was because I was there. Yes, I was at that convention. And how did I get there? Well, my father knew some people. And he, I wanted to go into broadcasting. And my father knew some people. And he pulled a few strings. And he got me an uh, a, 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 a interview to be a page for CBS at the Democratic Convention. Uh, it, uh, boy, my eyes are just trash tonight. Uh, I can't stand this. I, I just can't stand this. Hold on a second, folks. Let me, uh, let me get some tissue here. And let me do some stuff here. Oh, boy. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. This eye is just, do you notice how red it is? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, boy. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's not pink eye, although it's red. 
but it's allergies and we've had some real allergies going on here and it has just been been terrible uh so anyway uh i may run out and get some water for this in a minute anyway let me get back to the story i was going to tell so my father got me this interview and i got a job as a page boy i was 16 years old at the time a page boy at the Republican National Convention in San Francisco. Uh, this was the one that nominated Eisenhower and Nixon as vice president, okay? I think, was it the, uh, was it, was it the second uh, term for, um, I think it was, yeah, 56 would be the second term for uh, Eisenhower, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, it was it was something for me to be part of because I wanted to go into broadcasting. And where they put me as a page boy was my duty was to be at the in the uh, control room uh, at the convention hall, which was at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. Sorry, folks, I'm I'm so out of it trying to tell this story and have this eye just killing me. Uh, anyway. Um, uh, now, where was I? Oh, yeah. So anyway, so they put me in the control room uh, at CBS. And uh, of course, on the other side of us was Walter Cronkite. And he was anchoring the convention. Um, and I really, I really just, it, it was thrilling for me. Because I was in this control room and I got to watch uh, Don Hewitt, who later went on to become the guy who started 60 Minutes, Don Hewitt, direct this thing. And I got to see how directors direct. And uh, I got to also meet some of the biggest people in, in television in those days. For instance, uh, at one point, uh, they said, uh, the contr the uh, studio needs a, uh, a page boy. Would you run down there, please? And uh, Mr. Cronkite needs your help. And I said, oh, okay. So I go down, and, and there's there's Walter Cronkite, uh, who had yet, he I don't think at that time yet, he was the, uh, the guy on the CBS Evening News. He had done uh, a bunch of things like, uh, uh, what was it, You Are There and things like that. But he was the voice of authority, so they made him the host of the uh, convention. So I go into the studio, and he says, it's during a break, and he goes to me, and he says, listen, I don't know what I ate for lunch, but it was terrible. Can you get me something like Tums or something like that, some kind of anti, you know, uh, uh, for in, something for indigestion? And I said, sure. And I ran out, and I found somebody, and I got some Tums, and I went back into the studio, and I gave them to Walter Cronkite, and he chewed on them for a couple of se seconds, and then looked up at me and went, thank you very much. And I went, it's a pleasure. And I'd like to think that I kept Walter Cronkite from throwing up on national TV. But anyway, I digress. Also working at that convention, they said, would you go over to this, uh, this office and deliver a message to Mr. Murrow. This was Edward R. Murrow. Edward R. Murrow, even when I was uh, growing up, was an idol of mine. This was the guy who reported from the rooftops of London during World War II, and God, was he, he was just the best, okay? Uh, and uh, so I, I went down and delivered this message to uh, uh, Edward R. Murrow. Uh, and I go into this room, believe it or not, he used to smoke all the time. You know, the big thing was, you always, whenever you did an impression of, uh, of uh, Edward R. Murrow, you had to do the cigarette thing, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, this room, I walk into this room, it was, you, I think I could have gotten lung cancer just being in that room. I mean, it was so filled with smoke. It was amazing. But in those days, you could smoke anywhere. Oh, they were smoking in the control room, and they were doing all those kinds of things. I forgot to put this on, uh, on uh, 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 what do you call it? Oh, God. I do this every night. I forget to do this. Uh, Brian Ludwig, I want you not in here right now. 
So what do I do? I guess I'll just remove, uh, rem I'm going to remove you, Brian, for the time being. And uh, I'm going to remove Charlie as well. Well, uh, Charlie, you know how to be quiet. So um, enable waiting room. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, because you see, I mean, if, 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 you, if, you, if you look over here, see, there's, there's Charlie. He's patiently waiting. Okay. All right. Back to me. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. So um, uh, uh, let me see here. So I did the Merle part. Oh, yeah. And the next thing happened. Uh, Page Boy, we need somebody to help. Uh, this is Mrs. Paley. Now, Paley was the head of CBS. He was the big honcho at CBS. He and Stanton started CBS, and he was, uh, he was the big honcho. And he said, Mrs. Uh, uh, Stanton and Mrs. Paley needs uh, to go to her seat in the convention hall. Now, let me preface this by saying that if there was anybody at this convention my father hated more than any other, it was Richard Nixon. Nixon, I, up until I was uh, oh, 19 or 20, I thought that Nixon's first name was that asshole. I thought that was his first name, Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I'm so I'm, I take Mrs. I said, Mrs. Paley, uh, Paley, come with me, please. You know, I'm being very nice. She has some friends with her, and they're all they're all in the, in the mink coats and things like that, like they were going to some big celebrity thing instead of a smoke filled convention. And I uh, I start to take them to the seats, and what we had to do is you had to walk. This was in the Cow Palace, which was basically an arena, and so you walked in. You know how you do with arenas? You walk down kind of a funnel into the stadium itself. And I was on one of the upper tiers. And as soon as I walk through, they say, and I place a nomination the name of Richard Milhouse Nixon, and the whole place goes batshit, okay? And people then start marching around, and I'm being swept into this maelstrom of people who are all cheering and moving around and so on. And somebody puts a sign in my hand that says, Nixon's for us. And I think I threw it down, and I, I finally got back to Mrs. Paley, and things were a little bit better. But I want to show you, I found this because this was memorable to me. This was the actual scene that Walter Cronkite did when he was uh, in, uh, in, the, in the studio. And what it was is, in those days, they didn't have blue screens. Uh, what they had was... It looks like he's looking out on the floor of the convention, but he isn't. But that's a cutout. They actually cut that out of the picture and placed this other picture in it. There wasn't anything like a blue screen or even a black and white screen at that time that they could uh, do this with. But so he's not really looking out there, but it's very, very convincing. And I, and I remember it because this is what I remember always seeing as I sat in the control room watching this go on. Watch this, okay? All right, I gotta just do this a different way because I didn't set up some other stuff today. Down on the convention floor, Bill Leonard has been with the New York delegation, which was one of the leaders of this civil rights fight, and they lost that fight. Bill, how do they feel about it down there? Well, they're not down here, Walter, to feel about it. <laughs> But I'm a, you're a lonely-looking character down there, as a matter of fact. About well, five minutes after the New York delegation realized it had lost the fight, Walter, I was the only representative from New York in that big area. I've moved slightly over into the Texas delegation, or what was once the Texas delegation, to uh, say hello to you here. But I must say that the, one of the saddest sights I've ever seen at a political convention was the face of Senator Lehman as he realized that the fight was over and that he had lost. He had summoned up all of his veteran energies for this fight. He was scurrying around the floor and walking around, buttonholing delegates and doing the very best that he could. Uh, I asked him immediately afterwards uh, how he felt, and he said, I think I'll go home. And I said, well, Senator, does that mean you won't be back tomorrow? And he conjured up a sort of a wan smile and said, no, I'll be back. Yes, I'll be back, but I feel, well, and then he stopped. 
Then I turned to Carmine DeSapio and I asked him how he felt, whether there was any point in continuing the fight, and he said, what is there left to do? We did all we could. He was uh, bitter that he couldn't get a live microphone to demand a roll call. He said it was all done up there at the chair, but it's over now. And then he, too, left, until in a very few minutes, long before the call for adjournment, uh, the New York delegation was just empty seats. They're disappointed. Some members of the delegation rather feel that there are other things in the platform that are strong enough uh, so that they're really not as not bitter. One person put it this way, Walter, in conclusion, uh, we're not bitter about it. We're just disappointed, bitterly disappointed. Now, uh, back to Walter. Bill. At the Anything else? Sir? Yeah, Bill. Yeah. Uh, we had a report just a moment ago from the Associated Press that Frank McKinney, who you know has been one of the uh, strong backers of Averill Harriman's campaign for the presidency, mm -hmm. has conceded tonight. We just had word that the Harriman headquarters, as such, are con not conceding anything regarding that presidential nomination. I'm wondering if you heard anything from Carmine DeSapio about how he looks upon the situation now. Yes, I did. Uh, not in the last 15 minutes but I was with Mr. DeSapio constantly throughout the evening, and I suppose I asked him that question four or five times. Uh, I quoted him rumors to that effect, and he said, no, we're not giving up. Anything can happen. No, we're not giving up. I must say that at the very end of the evening, as they left, I had the definite impression that it was mostly lip service, but there was certainly... Okay, well, anyway, you get the idea. Okay, uh, that that was what it was like back in the day, and uh, also that they they didn't get any civil rights <laughs> civil rights legislation passed through. That's when there wasn't any. Okay, anyway, so that was my time at the uh, at the Republican convention. My father worked at that convention. He was a violinist. And they hired uh, what was it? P I S E N H O W E R. They hired ten musicians. And each one had a letter that, when they turned around after, after playing, spelled out Eisenhower. And my father, who wasn't a Republican, looked at all the guys as they were standing there waiting to go on. He says, you do realize that uh, seven of us would be out of work if they decided to spell like. So anyway, uh, it, that was a great moment for me, working there. And that was very memorable to me to see Walter in that setting. Uh, because that was the setting that I watched him work in. And I got to watch uh, uh, Don Yu at work, and it was, uh, it was pretty terrific all the way around. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Let me start bringing some people in here. I'm sorry, folks. I'm, I'm a little bit different tonight because we, uh, I had to use a different, uh, uh, I had to use a different uh, way of, of going, coming on tonight because YouTube, of course, has changed their whole uh, system and what I didn't change I didn't realize that when I set up a new profile for this I forgot to reset all my other things like where the thing gets recorded and uh, you know things like that so uh, please excuse me if you don't mind hello uh, Charlie hello Rob how are you guys Huh? The issues because what? people are complaining that your audio is low, and I'm looking here and it's non-existent on my board, and Wait, I thought what? it was me. It's non-existent. The audio level on your feed, and it was somebody else in the chat pointed it out. Yeah. That the audio, you know, on YouTube is very low, and I can tell you, it's non-existent on my board. Really? It's like barely oh. moving the needle. Okay. I was console. listening here on Zoom, so I, I think I know what the problem. On Zoom, might. it's fine, but on when I was listening to yeah. YouTube on my computer, it's extremely. I, I know what the problem probably is. Uh, no, that shouldn't be it either. No, that should be fine. I have no idea. Okay, let's see here. It's, uh, that's, also, the uh, audio that you played. Right. Auxiliary audio, uh, mic auxiliary audio. It's going out. Okay, of the audio mixer. Uh, I don't see any problem. Um, had to shut it off. Kentucky, da, 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 da. Hi, everybody. Charlie Wall. Sounds okay to you, Charlie? Yes, I was listening on, on Zoom. On Zoom. No, not fine. Zoom, but. Uh, um, yeah. Huh. That was already on Zoom when well, I was well, How about on, uh, on, uh, on, on the uh, YouTube feed? It's low. On the YouTube feed, it's, it's low. I have my pot up 100%, and I'm barely getting 
ten percent DB. It's just blipping the needle. Hmm. Sounds okay, Charlie. Uh, no, uh, uh, you you're hearing it right, Charlie. Well, uh, I you want me to turn on YouTube? I'm I'm yes. on, I'm listening on Zoom. Turn on YouTube and see, uh, because I you know uh, this this. Uh -huh. No, no, it sounds it sounds okay on on YouTube too. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's resolved, but I know when I was listening, I thought it was my board. Well, wait and then I played I, can, a, I played another YouTube video and it was fine. I can check it here. Uh, uh, you'll all hear a little bit of a, a playback here on the on the show, but let me see if I have a problem here. Uh, let me okay. see. So maybe it's resolved, but I know when I was listening, I mm -hmm. thought it was my board. Well, wait and then I played I can, a I played another YouTube video and it was fine. I can check it here. Oh, uh, I know what uh, it might you'll be. You'll all hear a little bit of a, a playback here on, the, on yeah. the show, but let me see mm -hmm. if I have a problem here. Let me see. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Okay. Okay. So I Maybe think, it's resolved, but I know when I was uh, listening, I mm -hmm. thought it was my board. Well, wait a minute. Let me check one listen? other thing here. I'm just trying to see if. Uh, the audio that I'm picking up, yeah, is is coming from there, yeah, and it's coming from there. Yeah, no, 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 it's it's um, it's coming from. Other, oh, let me see one other thing here. There's something changed or whatever. Oh, well, wait a minute. No, that's out. Where where sound preferences? Um, let me see here. Audio line in out. Uh, let me see here. Input is no. It's all gone fine. Hmm. Uh, I don't see any problem with it. You know what? Let me log off and listen again. I, I can't listen to the YouTube feed while I'm on here. Yeah. I'm coming up yeah. on the same channel. Maybe yeah. it did resolve itself. I'll log out and call back in. Yeah. You both sound great right now. Yeah. How about how about you, Phil? You hear so, me? Okay. Uh, yeah, I uh, didn't have uh, any issues. I listened to you on uh, YouTube on my phone, uh, and it was uh, uh, very clear and uh, a good sound. I, you know, I don't know I'll be right back. what other people are experiencing, but I, I heard you just fine. Everybody be quiet one second. No, no. It's coming. It, the microphone's working fine. I guess it's working fine. I don't know what... what the problem is to be honest with you hi everybody hello uh hello, li Jeff. listen i want to go wet this so talk to each other will you for a second uh okay. rob robert uh, you're the host of the show right now wow <laughs> this is cool <laughs> you're in charge i don't begin to know where to start I'll first say this, you guys that were from the New York area at any point in your life, I haven't heard the name Carmine DeSapio in over 40 years, I'll bet. That's, that's for sure. And for those of you who don't know, Carmine DeSapio at one point was the Secretary of State of New York, but more importantly, he was the very last head of the Tammany Hall uh, political machine oh. in New York City. That's where he was that's where he really made his name. Um, he was um, he was known to pull an illegal string or two here and there. How did he do while I was gone, everybody? Oh, just wonderful. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't ask for better. Give him his own show. Yeah. Sure. I'm ready. Maybe we can go. Well, when Anybody. you go on vacation, Robert can take over. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Uh, but wait. Oh, I don't want to do all the technical shit. That sounds like <laughs> such a headache. Nobody else. Does. Neither does Alex. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Apparently not. Not Phil. <laughs> he, he says the audio is perfect here. Somebody wrote. So. Yeah. Uh, it sounds yeah. fine. I'm not like off in the distance somewhere because sometimes. Uh, the mm -hmm. microphones in the I it, it's accidentally turned to the microphones in the cameras and then it sounds hollow but I looked in uh, there because if I hit this you shouldn't you don't hear any tapping do you no no, no. I will tell you I I did check yeah and it's a little better it is still low like nor like right now and pretty much every input I have right here at about 80 percent on the pot and I can go to 100 percent and it's still not as good as it usually is 
Really? So there is something, but you could figure it out. It's listenable. It's just, you know, people who are not coming through a console like I am, yeah. who can see levels, I'm telling you it's low. Well, I don't know, but I'm, you know, I've got my microphone up and everything now. So, uh, uh, Do you have a USB return on that? No. No? So uh, you can't just turn up the, the return? No, I don't turn up the return. Uh, I was talking to Rob. Oh. No, no, no. I, th there's, this is a, a broadcast console. It's taking an input in. I, I, I'm set like, and I just played another YouTube video. In fact, I've been looking at levels here lately because I had a bit of a power failure the other day. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, the cleaning lady actually knocked me down. But she cleaned <laughs> my studio yeah. and took me off the air. Um, and so I had, I had uh, tone up, bars and tone on YouTube. And I was just checking the levels. And so I still had that up. I, I was playing, listening to Alex, and I'm going, "What's? Why is it so low?" All these people on, at, on the in the chat room are saying the sound is fine. Well, okay, yeah, I'm just, you yeah, know, uh, you so. can turn up your volume, and it's going to be loud enough. I'm just telling you that it's a lot lower than it normally is. Really? Well, on my console, looking at the VU meters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, part part of the problem might be that that uh, I I. Uh, it's too much to explain, but I have to uh, change profiles to run on the new YouTube, okay? And so I set up these profiles, and that was really good. I did an, an oh, Bree just went away. Um, you got 10. Huh? You uh, got 10. Uh, really? You got 10? Okay, fine. I'm not going to put up the ro royal flush anymore. So when you change your profile, what do you do? You put your left side of the no 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 this is a profile this is a profile that deals with uh uh, uh what do you call it uh with uh, it, the fact that i when i use this new youtube i'm using a new what they call stream key and so i have uh youtube one and youtube two okay youtube one being the old one youtube two being the new one i set up the youtube two but i didn't realize you also have to set up all the different uh settings within the program so and i didn't do that so i was just checking to see if the audio settings were right but the audio settings are right so yeah my window is open <clears throat> your window is open. <laughs> okay. yeah the smell has gotten away from this uh, area Br Br uh, Br we... Br Bree once again is of the notion that we like watching him work in the garden mm -hmm. Yeah, I HGTV, know and I'm, I'm working on electrical lighting today. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I know about Do you want to see the civet this. cat I caught yesterday? The what? Yeah. yeah. I caught another civet. What's what? it, what's that? So, oh, the, uh, have wild. you ever heard of? Uh, have you ever heard of? Co what are you? What are you drinking right now, Alex? I'm drinking coffee. What are you drinking? Oh, you would rather have coffee from this creature. I, I thought there was a different... Oh, yeah, is that what it... That cat uh, poop coffee? Yeah, That's I, right. Uh, I thought the anal glands of the civet cat were called something else. Were... That's what I have. I have one right here. You want to see it? Yeah. No. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Give me a second. <clears throat> I'm doing rewiring of the... Uh, the, gar the outdoor lighting today. Bree, when you Let me take my gloves off. And you give them, you, get, you catch the cat, you give it to the humane society. What do they do? They come back to your neighborhood and, re and release them again? <laughs> Probably. I actually don't know what they do. Some people say don't give it to them. And, I thought they feral cats. That's, that's what they, uh, feral. Uh, mm -hmm. Or wild. Hello. That's another name for wild. Yeah. Okay. Here's here here's us live. Let me see how it sounds like. And release them again. <laughs> Probably. Wait, I actually let's don't see if I sound do. okay. Some people what? say don't give it. To the them. sound is fine, Alex. I, I'm sorry that Rob's having some trouble. It's, it's fine. Not me. The it's not me. I'm telling you. I'm the okay. only one, the only one with so wait, Everybody, be quiet so I can hear okay, if I here's, sound here's, right. Here's us live. Let me see how it sounds like. Yeah. Sounds fine to me. Okay, I'm just telling you, I have reference here, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't care what you got. It's <laughs> it's going out okay. It's going out low. You've you can got, raise the volume no, but and low will sound you, good. You've got, uh, Rob, what you have there may be reliable, but may not be valid. Uh, 
right, let's move on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been wiring this studio for two fucking months. Like, I know, I know. Me that it's not and, valid? And, and I've been unwiring this one. I'm telling you, I'm so sick of everything. Do you notice, have you noticed something uh, during the COVID crisis that services are de be getting depleted? I mean, tonight yes. I went on. I told you it's slowly. Can yeah, I, I can I finish what I was saying, Bree? Please. Um, uh, 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 I <laughs> yeah. found that, for instance, uh, my uh, the the servers that I deal with are going down like crazy. Uh, I found tonight I went to Amazon on just this computer, not on the others, but on this computer, and Amazon said, "We're ha whoops, we're having trouble." And this went on for about an hour. And every other computer I had could get on the Amazon except this one. And then all of a sudden it fixed itself. You know, I mean, and, and that's just one of the things. I woke up this morning with girlfriend saying to me, the sink is plugged. Now, I thought I was technical support. I didn't know that I was clean whatever there is in the drain out of there. So first I tried Drano, that didn't work. Then I tried some liquid plumber, that didn't work. And then I remembered I had this thing, it's like this plastic snake that came with one of these things. So I put it down in there and I pulled it out and this whole giant, I think a whole head full of hair came out of there. <laughs> yeah. So that's the first thing I get to do this morning, okay? Oh. Is I get to, uh, uh, pull the stuff out of the uh, out of the sink so then i pull it out of the i i throw it in the toilet and there's a whole wad of it in there to the <laughs> the fire's bothering you no the allergies are terrible just tell me so bad my eyes are just shot i can barely see uh uh it it so uh uh I, she comes home, and I go, look, and I showed her the sink, and I turned on the water full blast. It was just going down like it was getting sucked into the, and it, I was so proud of myself. And I said, you want to know what was in there? And she says, what? I said, look in the toilet. And she went, that's disgusting. I can't stand. I said, I had to pull that out of the drain, dear. Well, thank you. Now the toilet's clogged. That's, that's my, that's oh, the my toilet, daily life. The toilet was clogged the day before. And she used the plunger, but the daughter. plunger didn't work right. So I went in and plunged it, and so you know. And then it's 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 that, and then uh, <clears throat> something else is happening, and you know other things I can't make work. That's, like that's every day. Yeah, I finally got my light. Every day, I finally got my light working over here, through you know through my <clears throat> echo. I have to sit quietly. But I'm working on now because I, because I found that I, if I use my iPad instead of my iPhone I can get it to link up to the Wi-Fi I don't know why I think it's because I have a VPN on the on the phone and it's doing something to screw it up so what the hell you know uh, so uh, so I now can go uh, watch him back of me uh, <clears throat> echo turn off office See that? See the lights in the back of me went off? Echo, turn on office. There we go. Yep. And there's a light make over here, too. Make up your mind. Huh? <clears throat> Alex, make up your mind. Yeah. I can also I can also make it turn colors. Did I ever tell you? I can change it to very, any color I want. But I'm not going to do that right the hmm. reason I was showing my window is that the smoke has gone away, at least in the South really? Bay. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, I know. But what about you guys, uh, Phil and Kurt? Uh, it's kind of bad, but uh, I thought I was getting accustomed to it. It's, uh, it's still pretty uh, 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 thick. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Uh, have more, maybe we have more fires. I thought the biggest fire in the state was near you, uh, Rob. Uh, Brian. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if uh, Kevin comes on, I don't know if they've been. Maybe it's blowing south a little bit or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, supposedly the, the the fires are are going down. They're diminishing. It's cooler today too, and that yeah, could... really nice and cool. Well, I don't know if cool makes it better. 
Uh, certainly, heat for a sustained period of time makes the the uh, the leaves and everything you know drier and so forth. You know, uh, maybe it allowed the smoke to go into the atmosphere instead of being trapped in the uh, valleys. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. especially with the firefighters having to have all that gear on at you know 100 degree weather. Yeah, hot right garage, right? So maybe uh, you know when it's uh, the atmosphere is cooler, uh, there is a place for it to rise. Yeah. yeah. I see a business opportunity here. If we could get the rain from Hurricane Laura to your area, <laughs> you know, all we have to do is kind of use a Sharpie and yeah. redirect it and, you know, Bob Trump Durant. can do that. Yeah, Trump knows how to do that. Well, <laughs> so anybody, anybody. It'll get him a vote. He does. Did anybody see the uh, Republican convention uh, footage I ran tonight? Oh, yes, I did. In yeah. York, York, they sure were different, weren't they? Yeah. The whole nature of them. Well, it was in person, huh? No, it, no, it wasn't. It was in person. It was. It was civil. It was exciting. There was a lot of action going on. Nobody knew who was going to get the nomination. I mean, it was. It was, and there were smoke-filled rooms. And by the way, something the Republicans have avoided this year—a platform. Uh, no. Yeah. It seems to be a platform. No. Where? What? Where is it, Phil? What is it? more years. That's not a platform, board. Phil. Uh, there is no discussion. There is no discussion at all. Oh, I can't stand it, Phil. Go ahead. Hey, a uh, uh, hundred years ago, they had the Democratic uh, convention here in San Francisco at, at the Bill Graham Center. Oh, he's going to have, have a hissy Graham fit, Center. is he? No. You're going to have a hissy fit? Oh, good night. I, you because don't want to because I would because I'm tired of hearing the same drone every time you start talking and monopolizing the conversation. You, and, you, you, and you won't have to hear it tonight. Uh, I'll go watch TV. Have a nice evening. Oh, okay. goodbye, ch uh, child. Goodbye, yeah. you. You, you, you ca coward. Oh boy. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I just. What's that I, all about? Well, no. I mean, I'm. I, 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 I get a little tired of the fact that he just, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, you know? I mean, it's just, it's just too, too much. Plus, you have other people here who really don't feel the impetus to be part of the discussion because they feel drowned out by this guy with this big mic, you know? <clears throat> And I'm, I, and quite frankly, I, you know, I find the thing we do on uh, Mondays a great relief because Phil isn't there, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, I just get awfully tired of it. And then tonight, of course, because I'm, I, I simply said, "You talk," you know, because I, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to listen to it, you know. Uh, oh, I'm going away. I'm not loved anymore. Goodbye. No, he's not the star of the fucking well, show. You all are stars of the fucking show, you know? Well, and, and, well, I've said it a million times that, you know, it, it's important to hear the other side, to, to hear all sides, I guess I should say, not the other side. That implies that I, I'm on one side. So I like Phil from that perspective. But the thing is, is that he tends to dominate, and it's not a discussion. It's sort of monologue 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 yeah you know it, there's never a there's never a give and take it's always this is the way it is now i appreciate that he's firm in his convictions whatever i don't think beliefs. he's firm in his convictions how can you he's firm in his stupidity if that's what he really truly believes <laughs> you know because yeah. I'm, I'm sorry but you know even i even when obama was president and i'm a democrat and i'm a lefty yes. yeah. i did criticize well, obama for certain things because that, that's, that's part of the yeah that's part of the but, democrats but he never uh, way of he being. never criticizes the republicans well, that's how the yeah, Trump Republicans are. Don't. it's a cult yeah but it's he, a yeah. cult well, i think like, part of yeah it. it's like jerry falwell yeah. yeah i think part of it is they feel that donald gets so much shit that they have to stand up for him, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, regardless. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I don't think I I don't think he deserves uh, uh, to be given a free pass on everything. You know, I mean, it just it isn't right. Now, I agree. I like the idea that we have a Republican on the panel. 
but we also have a Republican on the panel, and Patrick is here. And Patrick is terrific, you know? And he's mm-hmm. respectful of the rest of you. And actually, he waits for his best shot. actually, Alex, I, I think I'm still registered Republican, but I identify as independent. But I've been a Republican most of my life. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, but I I've mean, never I've ne- I've only voted for a Democrat once, yeah. I think, in my life. I voted for one mayor of Pittsburgh because I worked on his campaign. And I got to tell you, a lot of people but I've worked with Republicans and Democrats yeah. and Greens. A lot of Republicans do not Sorry. like Trump because they don't feel he's a Republican. They don't feel he represents Republican values. I don't think any of these guys are Republicans that are running in running the fucking Republican Party. You know? Well, I mean, it's been hijacked. It's been hijacked yeah. by um, uh, what could we corporatists? Maybe that would be crazy, the best way of putting crazy it. Crazy fuckers, you know. Uh, Just crazy ass people. I mean, there was a time. I mean, when you go back to the time and you saw there the Republican convention, you had Eisenhower. He was pretty good. You know, he was a decent enough guy, and there was no politics of fear or anything like that. You know. And everybody came out and said, here's how we're going to make America better. Not great again, better, you know. Um, And uh, I think the Democrats this year picked out a pretty good slogan, which, by the way, I think was actually coined by Cuomo, and that's build back better, Uh, you know. Uh, But, I mean... I just, I, 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 you know, and but every time, anytime anybody says anything about Trump, Phil's got to pipe in, you know, and make his 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 his, his put his his hundred cents worth in, you know. And I feel bad for the rest of you because you feel shy to get in and talk because he's dominating all the time. I so, don't. Huh? I don't feel shy. Well, I know you don't feel shy. <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, so anyway, so how are my levels now, Rob? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not uh, monitoring them. You're so. not monitoring them anymore. I know that uh, that uh, uh, here I, I, you know, I mean, I look to make sure the levels are high enough. Uh, but I don't have a large, a loud, and a really loud signal coming out of this board, oddly enough. It's because it's a USB output, and you can't control the USB output. It either takes what it's going to take, or that's it. You can't uh, attenuate a, a USB signal. Am I right, Rob? It's uh, if it's digital to digital, that's true. Yeah. It, you know that's that's certainly true because yeah. it's it, yeah. it's it's digital. Yeah. So anyway, so I mean, we may have had some problems in the beginning, only because I I, I this whole thing. I thought I had all my bases covered, but you know what you you know what it, what it's all about. Yeah. You can think you have all your bases covered, and then you go, "That doesn't work, and that doesn't work." Oh, I didn't do that, and I didn't do this. I've got a, a on the computer screen here. This is the automation software that runs the radio station, and there are four players on the bottom that run. Mm-hmm. And right now, for and the reason I had the bars and tone up on on uh, YouTube, you can find anything on YouTube. I need to record the bars and tone. Or just the tone anyway, I'm not doing television, and run it in each one of these players because I'm finding that when I'm in program, I'm not listening to air and I'm listening to program, the, the levels are not consistent, and I'm trying to figure out how to adjust that. Yeah. That's yeah. how I happen to have the tone up when I, you know, I was like, oh, okay, it's, I'm going to dial in to Alex, and I'm like, what the hell, this is low, and I thought, all right, maybe it's me, so I hit the tone, bam, the tone went right on YouTube went right up to you know, zero, you know, VU, zero dB there. Yeah, yeah. And then I put you on, and you were barely, you know, moving the dial. I was, uh, yeah. Program, same, you know, same input. Well, I, I don't know, same. I don't know why. I mean, I looked at all the things that could have made it bad, and, and it wasn't. Sometimes it happens that, you know, one thing or another, but this is going through the, uh, through the digital, but you're hearing over YouTube is a digital signal coming out of my board so Mm -hmm. i can't control it other than by making it fairly solid here um but uh i don't entirely understand all of that you know i i I just i just want to do a show i don't want to have to have things break on me Hmm. you know alex while you were gone we discussed carmine de sapio you should know that in case it comes up on friday's test (laughs) Uh, now wait a minute. Now I know the name Carmine DeSapio, okay, but uh-huh. I forget what I know him for. 
He was the Secretary of State of the State of New York, but more importantly, he was the very last head of Tammany Hall. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Sort of a kingmaker in New York City politics. So in other words, in other words, if you want to become president of the United States, you had to go through Carmine DiSapio. Much like Franklin Delano Roosevelt had to go to Jersey City, of all places, hat in hand, to speak to a man named Frank Haig, who was the mayor of Jersey City and an extremely powerful man in East Coast politics. Wow. Wow. Well, what did you? Good history there. Yeah. Did you did you hear today? Jeff probably did about what Cuomo did. <laughs> no. He, what he, did he, do he told the CDC to go fuck themselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> basically, mm-hmm. I would say that's basically the sum total of what he was saying. More he or less. Ju- he just yeah. put it in more political terms. Yes. Uh, the uh, CDC came out with some kind of insane edict. That you don't need a COVID test if you have COVID. Was that it? Or no, if you were exposed to COVID, you didn't need to take a COVID test. Right. Unless you had symptoms. Unless you had symptoms. Right. Mm. Because this is part of the president's desire to lower the amount of tests that are being no. done. Because his theory is, if you don't do tests, you don't know. You you won't have COVID. Well, I got news for you. We did 100,000 tests the other day and got the lowest percentile we've ever gotten of people uh, that turned up positive. We did 100,000, and I think we had something like a uh, 0.7% infection rate. So every time we go up, it goes down. So the more testing you do, the, the better the result is, and probably the more accurate the, uh, you know, the, the result is. But it's like, uh, uh, you know, if you don't go to the dentist, you won't get a toothache. Yeah. You know? Don't take a pregnancy test. Don't, don't take a pregnancy <laughs> test. You won't be pregnant. Just, she's just getting fat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting fat when something pops out nine months later. I don't know. Get rid of it in the garbage disposal. You know, I mean. Kevin, how's the how's the fires down there? It's, up here, it's really clear, no smell at all up here. Yeah, it was it was okay most of the day, and then the afternoon it started getting smoky again. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. They're starting they're starting to they're starting to hit them pretty hard. The planes are coming over quite often, but they're oh, yeah. getting them. They're getting them. Good. Wow. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, but anyways, all those houses going up, so, so, uh, so, yeah. you know, Cuomo said, we're not going to take any CDC directions. We're going to play our own game. We've done it right. We've done it well. We've been an example to the rest of the country on how you beat this thing. And, uh, we're, the, we, uh, we're more experts than they are. And they're now a tool of the, of, of the Trump administration. And that's not a safe place to be. I don't, uh, I, I, you know, I think, uh, uh, is anybody watching the convention itself? I was no, watching Hill just now. Huh? I looked at it for uh, an hour today. Yeah. On and off. Yeah. It's pretty boring. Really? <laughs> Same shit. You know, you know, they, they had this guy, uh, what, what's his, Madison Cawthorn or something like that? He's like the youngest guy that's ever run for uh, Congress. It's like 25. And um, he, he, his story is he got in a car crash and he's a paraplegic now. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, but, but he's a super guns right guy. But what they didn't, you know, what, what, what they didn't tell anybody is that there's on his Twitter, there's a bunch of pictures of him when he uh, went on a vacation to Hitler's uh, vacation spot. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they forgot to mention that. <laughs> that the football player, the football player, uh, Mike Brewer, Mike yeah, Brewer, yeah. I think his name was. Jim Brewer. I yeah. had to Google him because I'd never heard of him. He was even on the Eagles. He was on the Eagles, and he's only played for three years. And then the next thing that popped up was he was accused of insider trading or something. Yeah. Well, it's, it's right it, in. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, exactly. Isn't yeah. it the interesting the lack of any major uh, personalities, show business personalities at the Republican convention? 
And yeah, I we just had uh, Trace Atkins sing the uh, national anthem here just a few minutes ago, and he trashed it. Who's Trace Atkins? <laughs> he, he sang it badly? Yeah, he, he, he did try to do his low voice thing. A real deep voice, it. yeah. No oh, boy. I don't even know who Trace Atkins is, so, you know. He's a country guy, you know, the yeah. typical country singer. I'm surprised they have about get, 12 of his CDs. Right? Uh, uh, he saw, uh, it, it, you know, uh, but, but on the other hand, did the Democrats have many personalities? I'm trying to think. I mean, usually you'd have you'd have uh, George yeah, Clooney Warren, show yeah. up. What? Julia Dreyfus. Yeah, Julia Louise Dreyfus was, was yeah. one of the. Didn't she give a hosts. speech though, and they said it was kind of not nice? <laughs> I thought it was okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, but you know, usually, I mean, where's George Clooney? He's absent. I haven't seen him. In, you know, he's usually up to his neck in this kind of thing, and yeah. he hasn't been involved. And they say, I wonder if there's a reason. Are you Maybe know, not shooting too many movie. kids. What? Ted Cruz. What'd you say? Ted Cruz is not at the Republican convention. He's not giving a speech. He can't speak. Yeah, he wasn't uh -huh. even invited. By the way, by the way, Trump Jr.'s uh, girlfriend, Gilfoyle, is her name? <laughs> Did you see her? Yeah. yeah. She's loony. Yeah, she's loony yeah. tunes. Totally. She, she's absolutely. She didn't even need a microphone. Huh? She didn't need a microphone. No. She's talking to an no. empty and, 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 and I don't know if, if Trump Jr. has looked at her, but she's a bit on the chunky side, isn't she? Yep, yep. yep. Yeah. I wouldn't, make, I wouldn't make fun of that sort of thing, but since Trump would, oh, I figure it's fair game. You know? Personally, when I, need, when I need political advice, personally, I look to Scott Baio. I always want to track <laughs> well, what Scott Bayo thinks well, uh, that before the, I make an informed decision. That was the one Achy. thing that held me back in all of this was Scott Bayo, uh, because I've been thinking, nah, I don't want to vote for Trump. I can't vote for Trump. There's no reason to vote for Trump. And I said, Scott Bayo? <laughs> Scott Achy. Bayo? I may have to think twice about uh -huh. this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, you know, boy. come across Scott Bayo every day. Yeah. <laughs> or, even <laughs> or even one day. Or even one day. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. We, we watched another, I don't know, six or eight episodes of The Americans. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, anybody ever watch this show? Yeah, I, I love that show. You love that show? Episode. Tell me what you loved about it. Because maybe it's because we're binge watching it and it doesn't binge well. Hmm. It could be that every week when you wait for the next episode, it's, you know, it's a lot better. But, no. I mean, when you watch it, it, it's like, do these people ever sleep? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 like, and he's got two marriages going. And a deal going with a teenage girl? Yeah. When does he have time to sleep? And then they also go out and, you know, kill people and blow things up and do stuff like that. And you go, there's no reality here. It wasn't real. You know. What would you like about it? I like Carrie Russell. Yeah, well, that, it's fine. Um, and I just thought I enjoyed the story. We it was we did watch it once a week on uh, FX, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, and look forward to it. DVR'd when, it. When shows yeah. reveal themselves week by week, and are not you know, those shows may not be good for binge watching, simply yeah, because yeah. they're they're not done as a stream. You know, they're done as a kind of. A, I notice what happens with each episode of The Americans. Because each episode is really a different adventure. And there's a running story, but it's a different adventure. Uh, whereas with uh, binge watching, they don't necessarily do that. I just found it fascinating, the dichotomy of being parents of American children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to love those American children who are being brought up with the American way of life, right? Yeah. They don't know from the home country. Yeah, and I, I just thought it was, you know, I I love the way it was the play in between, you know, that whole thing. How you know they go to work and he's sleeping with that other wife, and then he comes home when he's yeah. Home. But I, that's where I found it impossible to believe to begin with. This Why? guy that's because he's a spy. 
Yeah, spies it, do yeah, that. Yeah, but he would also wind up spending a lot of money getting his prostate worked on at the uh, urologist. I mean, he's he's screwing everything in sight. Uh, he's he, and on top of that, they're doing extracurricular stuff. I mean, it just it, none of it makes sense, particularly. Uh, if I, if you were a spy, let me say this to you, Rob. Let's say you mm -hmm. and a woman got together and they made you Russian spies, and then they sent you over here. Would you want to be strapped down with kids and do your spy stuff? Well, they're trying to be the average American yeah. family. I yeah. mean, it's all a cover. Yeah, the whole cover. thing is a cover. Yeah, Nothing's I know it's a cover, important. but but how do you how do you raise a family? Like, well, I'm sorry, I have to, I, have, I can't kill any more people. I have to go home and make dinner. You know, I mean, it just it was, there's a real suspension of disbelief you have to engage in. Now, granted, mm -hmm. we got into the fourth season. We've kind, we're kind of getting tired now. We we feel that maybe. In the few years we've got left, we should do something better with our lives than watch the Americans. But anybody else see it? Yeah, I love that. I mean, the yeah. acting is superb. Ma Matthew Reese, uh, mm -hmm. well, Gary Russell, uh, mm -hmm. who's the guy that plays the FBI agent? He's great. Yep. Margo the, Martindale. The neighbor. Ma Margo. Yeah, Mark, yeah, the neighbor. The, uh, huh? the wildlife people just came. They got, they got a monkey in their truck, too. What? What's this? Sorry about that. The wildlife people came. They they've got a monkey in their truck, and then they had to they had to put the uh, civic cat under because he was too active. <laughs> so they they dosed him with something, and he went. He became very docile. Okay. Now they're leaving. Okay. All right. Well, I thought you were going to show us the civic cat. Yeah, I thought you were going to show us the civic what? cat. I did show it earlier. Well, I didn't. I see did it. show it earlier. I, must have I didn't want to get too close to him, but if you look back, I, I do have the cage there. But I, he was a little too stressed out. I didn't want to. He came get him in. Going. He, he came, was sleeping. He came into your yard. Is that what he did? In his house. No, no. They go in the attic. Yeah, I can show you. They they climb up the the rain pipes. I've got to get some better ways to keep them off. Mm -hmm. But you can see their paw prints on there. Yeah. And they go up there too. Wow! And, and they, they go up And they're there. wild. They're wild cats, right? Yeah. Oh, they're wild. Oh, yeah. They're civet wild. Some people do keep them as pets. I've I've come to learn. Um, I don't know why. I wouldn't do it. But I mean, I guess if you get them young enough, well, you know. Well, you know, there is a there is a domesticated cat called a serval. Um, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I had. Two girlfriends who had servals. Well, Ronnie had a serval, and uh, uh, my ex-girlfriend had a serval. They're huge, huge cats. Oh, okay. Yeah, the giant cats. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah, they, the African version of this one is pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Uh, this is the trap we caught him in here. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we'll, we'll get that back up into the attic. Uh, we'll get that back up into the attic today. Well, I don't know about today. <laughs> I want to take a break. Yeah, so that's my papaya tree. So, how do you people feel uh, the uh, Republicans are doing? I mean, showbiz wise. I mean, are they putting on a, a decent show, or is it just boring? Eh. People huh? said that Donald Trump Jr. and Kimberly Goffoyle were on some drugs when they delivered their speeches. <laughs> they, like they did. I don't think it's going to bring any new people into the party. You know, and they just lie. They just yeah. tell bald faced lies all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. The whole thing's a big fucking gaslighting thing. Well, like, yeah. That Go video yesterday, they were, they were saying, uh, oh, you know, when the, when, when the pandemic showed up, you know, our brave leader took bold action while the, these Democrats were, you know, minimizing the danger. I'm like, what the fuck? Just the opposite of what happened. <laughs> yeah, if that ain't gaslighting, what the fuck is that? Well, I know, no, I, I'm, I don't get why people are using this term gaslighting when what they're describing isn't gaslighting. Right. No, in the movie, the guy was always telling his wife, you know, what she saw wasn't what she really saw. Right, but he made That's her think the, the gaslighting was to make her think she was crazy. 
Right. Yeah. Well, the Republicans aren't trying to make us feel we're crazy. They're trying to yeah, make us feel that us they've got exactly. They're telling us act opposite of what we see. Yeah, you know? but I wouldn't call yeah. it. I I think it's a misuse of the term gaslighting. I know you yeah. didn't start using it. Other people I've heard use it. Yeah. Recently as well. It's, and it's I just, just public relations. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. I think there were a couple of interesting touches last night, including uh, him doing naturalization services oh, yeah. for several immigrants. That was that was pretty cheesy. Yeah. And the That's other true. thing is inviting the attorney general from Kentucky, who's yet to bring any charges in the Brianna Taylor murder, which was just like smack my head. Was he on up there giving a speech? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh really? Uh, yes, uh, Brian. Brian Ludwig. Yeah, yes. Do you see a difference between gaslighting and voter shaming? Because to me, they seem to be one and the same. And voter what? Especially and voter what? Gaslighting and voter shaming. Because to me, they seem one well, and the I same. Don't, I didn't get what... I didn't, wait a minute, Republicans. hold on a second. I didn't get what the second word was. You said voter what? Voter shaming. S-H-A-M-I-N-G. No, it's no, it, that's yeah. not gaslighting vote for, vote for one. Vote for one of the two uh, mainstream candidates, or otherwise you're a piece of shit who doesn't deserve to live. You're, you're a piece of shit who doesn't deserve to live in this country. Um, yeah, to me, it's... They're, they're, they're both... No, we're same. not saying that. We're saying you're throwing your vote away, but we're not saying you're crazy. No, well, you're not shit. necessarily, but the, uh, the uh, establishment hacks on both sides seem to be saying that no i think that. i think for instance trump would like you to vote for a third party brian because he knows yeah. that you that way you're not voting for uh for uh, um, uh, what's his name biden no, he's actually been i, I remember him uh, tweeting something to the effect of the bernie bros got screwed come vote for us republicans yeah uh, which i'm not going to do hell no well, well the also, bernie bros no the not, bernie bros didn't get screwed this time you know, Bernie lost fair and square. I would, well, yeah, no, he so lost fair and square. This time around, yeah. This time around. It's I think that, I think that it was kind of a fix-in with Hillary. Yeah, I will agree with you on that one. But yeah, I don't I'm, think... I'm not too impressed with Bernie. But I don't I think it happened. I don't anybody could expect the Bernie people to vote for Republicans since Bernie is the exact opposite of everything the Republican yeah. Party stands for. But a lot of them Pretty did much. vote for him. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's the trouble with the Bernie bros. They, you couldn't convert them into Hillary voters. Wait a minute. More Bernie voters in 2016 voted for Hillary than Hillary voters voted for Barack Obama in 2008. But they, but they said there were a lot of the Bernie bros who went out and said, I just voted for Trump. Right. Because I couldn't get my person nominated. Also, a lot. Was maybe somebody point. said it, but not a lot. What, what, what 10%, you, that's how many Bernie supporters from the primary yeah. voted for um, See, I, I agree I agree with Brian to a certain extent that, you know, if you want to vote for a third party, you shouldn't be disparaged from doing that. However, in this particular situation, we have such a dire situation that... Quite frankly, we can't afford to just throw that vote aw uh, uh, that vote away. You've got to put it in one of those two places. Uh, and uh, I don't, you know, I'm no big Biden fan, but I'm not. What am I going to do? Vote for Trump? And I'm not voting for Jill Stein for crying out loud or whoever's running on the Green Party. I met Jill Stein. She's the biggest moron I ever talked to. You know. Well, is serious about twelve more years. If Trump gets four more years, there won't be a 2024 election. That's he's going right. to become dictator. I don't, I don't think he's going to leave, even if he gets uh, beat. I, I, I just I don't He'll think have he's going to leave. Now. So logically, Brian Ludwig, what would you say in that case that if 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 Trump wins again, we may have him for 12 years? I mean, if he lives that long, I doubt. Oh, yeah, he's going to die. But then. Don Jr. will take over yeah. and become a dynasty like that. Yeah, I mean... Be horror, that'd be okay, you asked me a direct question? Yeah. What, what's to be said if uh, Trump declares himself basically dictator for another 12 years, if not a lifetime, yeah. however long that lifetime is? Yeah. I would say that America is considerably weaker than many of us, especially on this panel and on that comment box, because I'm watching this muted on my TV. 
and this uh, asshole is telling me to knock it off, uh, Matt Crash or whatever, I would say that uh, this country is a lot weaker than uh, we give it credit for. It's one thing about us Americans. We do love the sound of our own voice, but we're not that great of a country, if, especially if we allow this bloviating douchebag no, to take no, over our you, lives, you, falling you, susceptible to the two-party system. Look, uh, don't. Uh, I never have given Americans a great deal of credit for smarts, yeah. okay? Uh, but uh, I, I think that they should not be voting in their own worst interest. And that's what they're doing. I mean, I saw a bunch of bikers today out there going, Trump, Trump's our man, Trump's our, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, would Trump even hang out with these guys? Probably not. Would Trump even yeah, embrace even these guys that. on any level? You know. I think Howard Stern even said that, he, since he knows Trump so well. I think he was on the record as saying, Trump would not want to fraternize at all with you people. Right. But nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. so, and you know, 10 what, years ago, those bikers were... Ten years ago, those bikers would be pissed at a man like Trump. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's what I can't understand. Vote. That's what's hard to understand. Where did the common sense go? Where did level, like level it, it, set? It, it's, it's amazing to me because the, uh, Trump is the epitome of the typical corporate asshole that everybody yeah. wanted to just, you know, piss on because yeah. he stood up there in the in the big office and everybody would stand there and go, that fucking asshole's taking all my money. We're working our ass off, and he's sitting up in the office. But now he's God. I don't understand it. Well, I, I don't mean, understand it at all. Uh, here's somebody, Michael Ovi Oviedo. Well, let's see. Let's admit him, and I'll be ready to get rid of him as soon as he doesn't. Well, he just Let disappeared. Him in. He just disappeared. So, uh, yeah, must he's be a afraid. Afraid. yeah. Yeah. I honestly think it goes beyond the love for Trump. I honestly think what's happened in our country is a sort of anti-intellectualism, anti-education, yeah. anti-science, yeah. anti-expertise. I think it's almost like there's been this surge of, how would you call it, like, a, like an inferiority complex that's kind of banded people together to say those people who think they're smart don't yeah. know as much as they think and yeah. so they kind of band together now i'm not trying to say anything disparaging but take note of the figures of people who have a college education mm -hmm. and where their votes fall and it kind of points you in a direction of a sort of disparaging of the press of the institutions of you know anything that's learned or has expertise um, some of my closest friends remark all the time that it's almost a culture war more than it is a pro or anti-Trump. Yeah. 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 yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I totally but, agree. You know, and I think, mm -hmm. in a way, it makes the Democrats look even worse. It makes yeah, it the does. Democrats look like a bunch of hoity-toity assholes. Yeah, it does. And the meantime, that's what bothers me, too. That wasn't right. our, our history, Kevin. You know, like the Democratic Party wasn't that it was a party of labor you know it was a party of grassroots individuals yeah the democrats yeah. Sit there and go, look at them the look at awful. them oh they're just so bad you know and then we're sitting here going you know fuck you fuck you the republicans yeah. are saying fuck you and, and people like it when people turn around and say fuck you exactly you know? how do that, you take that how do you take that? comes out and people get gather around that mentality it, yeah. to begin with what is it in Trump that these bikers like? They like the fact that Trump says, fuck you. Yeah, okay, but, absolutely. But, but what would it take to get them over to our side? Oh, we have to say universal health care for one. <laughs> universal <laughs> health care for bikers? They don't give a shit about universal health care, Brian. Mm, well, why don't you test you, that? You put, you put money in their the pockets. They'll be happy. You know, uh, and I got I news for you. You know, universal health care is a definitely one of the most important. Well, here comes Vinny. Oh, I don't believe this. Takamiya. No, it's that's not the only thing, cousin. though, Alex. Huh? I said that's not the only thing that would lure those bikers over. Another would be economic protectionism. No more competing with Beijing. No more competing with India. No more competing with those assholes. Let them fend yeah. for themselves. That's what if Trump's they, doing. But it doesn't work that yeah. way. 
This is a global economy. The world yeah. no longer. Mm -hmm. See, see what happened when I brought oh. this guy in. Let me see yeah. here. Wow. Hey, goodbye, Vinny. Wow. Vinny, go fuck yourself, Vinny. There we go. Vinny Uh huh. <laughs> Also, I've uh, posted on Facebook uh, a short while ago, that uh, a few days ago, that austerity serves as a breeding ground for demagogues. And uh, it's, that austerity has uh, transpired with both uh, established uh, Republican and Democratic politicians. So that's what brought us Trump to begin with in 2016, because people felt they were disenfranchised. Even the ones who were on the fence about voting for a man like Trump, they decided to take a chance. Now they probably regret it, but... Um, sure. Yeah. Exactly. And we're voting Man another guy populist. in who will bring us more of the same. He's on record as saying that nothing will fundamentally change. I'm talking about Biden now. Nothing will fundamentally change. Well, what didn't change is what got us Trump to begin with. In four, year, four or eight years from now, say Biden does win, four or eight years from now, who's to say we won't get someone worse than Trump? Like a Tom Cotton or that bitch who just won the uh, QAnon, the QAnon uh, lady who... Uh, won the uh, primary who's to say she won't run and get nominated yeah. and get elected four or eight years from now if you know, this you, you sound like me about 30 years ago brian <laughs> that's you funny sound like me say. about 30 years ago that's funny you say i was going to say to brian ludwig i don't mean this to say that uh, in any way to be disparaging toward you i, I was you at yeah. one other point in my life i really yeah. was and I'm not saying you have to evolve the same way I do. I would never say that to anyone. But here's how I evolved. For me, I suddenly saw it as a as a um, a conflict between idealism and pragmatism. My idealism had me write in Gene McCarthy, you know, at some, at one point in my life because I adored the guy. But it didn't work. You know what I found out? I wrote in. I voted for Ralph Nader. But what I eventually found out was, for me, just speaking for me, that pragmatism was far more important than with the establishment candidate, I could at least see some of the progress that I hoped to yeah, get. I had, I had a lot of the same stuff you had and the same stuff uh, Ludwig has uh, back in the day. Uh, I guess as we get older, it's not that we become old farts, but we become more practical. And we realize that the, the changing a system is a very slow process. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you have to, I mean, I consider Biden to be, uh, if to, the best term I could use is mainstream. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I've never liked mainstream. I like people who work outside the box and everything. But I realize that I'm not going to get some weirdo elected president who I think is uh, interesting because he hasn't got a chance that somehow this is, hey, every, the winner takes all, you know. Yeah, and, the closest, and The closest I ever got to that, I felt that Obama in his second term was actually going to be that. Yeah. I thought maybe he was actually going to, he got he got his first four years and I said, okay, this guy might do something this time. Except he's he had a Republican do something, House And I felt good about voting for him. Yeah, for he lost power, though, in his second term. Yeah, exactly. Actually, in his first term. It, it's yeah. hard. It's freaking hard. Well, I'll tell you what we got to hope for. It. What we got to hope for in this case is we got to hope for a Republican Congress, a Republican Senate, and a Republican, uh, excuse me, a Democratic Democrat. Senate, a Democratic yeah. Congress, and a Democratic President. And then let's get some shit done, you know? And yeah. yes, yes, Rob. Maybe. Well, my uh, my graduate school work was in political science. I had the most dynamic professor named Bill Berlin. And one day in a conversation with him after a class, I said to him, you know what the problem is with the two party system? None of these politicians say a thing. It's all mumbo jumbo and all like so. He stopped me in my tracks and said, that's your fault. And I said, what the hell do you mean? And he said, when a politician in today's society takes a stand on any issue, immediately they've lost a chunk of the electorate. If they say they're pro-choice, they lose the pro-life people. If they say they're for restricting the Second Amendment, they've lost those people. So in effect, what we've created is we've created a sort of one issue you know, choice for people. And as a result, politicians, 
kind of try to walk the straight and narrow and never really give a definitive, you know, look at anything. We've They're made always it walking there. on eggshells. Well, exactly. he, I, I always like to go back and tell the story about Jerry Brown, who did my radio show when he was running for president, and he came in, and he was exactly that way. He was safe about everything. Later on, he came on my show after he no longer was running for president. He came on, he read the California Highway Patrol, the Riot Act, and was going after everybody on everything. And I looked at him and I said, I love you. I would have voted for you if you had just been like this when you were running for president. And he said to me, I couldn't do that. I said, why? My handlers told me not to. Yep, wouldn't work. You know, he said, I can do it now because I'm not running for anything. Well, and see, what yeah. I would like to see is everybody act like they weren't running for anything. See, you know? that's what, but that's, that's what Donald Trump what, does. That's kind of what Trump's <clears throat> that's what doing Trump right does. now. Exactly. That's what Trump's doing right now. And he's got a group of people that are keeping him there doing it. Oh, you but, and, but, but and, he, 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 he's the protest, whether you like it or not, he's the protest candidate. I mean, he's right. the only, you got two choices, system or non-system. But Like but, it or not, Trump is non-system. Yeah, but he had a lot of people trying that experiment last the last election a lot of people went for an experiment and said okay let's see what this guy can do if he's so yeah. he's so he's so ornery let's try it and see what he can do mm -hmm. and boy he, yeah you know the experiment he ran on big anti-wall street yeah. but he's been the uh, most wall yeah. street president we've ever had yeah, yeah he's yeah, a scam yeah. artist he's a scammer he, he's fucked a lot of that stuff he fucked with a lot of that well, stuff too but the other part of it is that was right wingers. The other part of it is, is there's so much division yeah. that nothing yeah. could get done whether you're Republican or Democrat. You can't and, get and done. And 15, 15, 20 years ago, you know, the Republicans and the Democrats they would compromise and they would get shit done. They would at but least since, come across the aisle. Listen, I, it, the Tea Party it, it, people yeah. and all these th these fucking. They're, they're like, fuck it, just destroy next, the whole thing. If to, we can't next year, if the Democrats it. are in power, the Republicans will piss on them. Next but year, you know what? That's, that's what scares the me. The Democrats will piss on the Republicans. It's just going to go back and forth for years until something happens. That's what scares me about what you just said regarding the Tea Party came in. And, and I think it's the same on the other side with all of the progressives coming in. So, they're so going look, to be just as radical, and they're going to be staunch in their... But, and there's going to be name, a name, less compromise. Name one, see, that's what, that's, one that's radical right. position. Okay. What radical, that's what I think Brian uh, is thinking uh, is that we need Jeff to who has said, in there to stir it up. Jeff who said, I, you know, that's what I used to think. Jeff who said barely anything tonight has been wanting, is wanting to say something. Oh, yeah, the one thing that I, that I remember is that we used to uh, look at maybe four different people who were trying to uh, become the president from the Democrats, and maybe the Republicans had a multiple number of people. Uh, sometimes at the beginning, I think there was six people. But, well, last time the Republicans had, like, with, with Trump, they had a gangbang going on. Yeah, they you did. Know, they had about 12 or 15, something like that, some amazing. I know, amount. but when, when you have a multiple group of people like that, you get to get more uh, interest, more different thoughts rather than it's just yeah but still uh, it you know i mean i and i this, this is why i i am sympathetic to a certain extent with brian is that my argument has always been since years ago i said we have we really have two parties fighting tooth and nail with each other over who's going to be the best president but nobody is offering us a different system you know, they're all fighting to maintain the same system. They're just arguing about how they're going to do it. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and we've never had a really, lately, within our lifetimes, uh, we haven't had a viable third party uh, that came out. And, you know, the closest thing we had was Perot, and he wasn't going to win. So, yeah. you know, uh, he you just, he became a spoke. No, I didn't. Did you? Did you yeah. vote? You voted for him? I did vote. Yeah. You see, that's when you were Ross younger. For boss. That, that's when you were a, a whippersnapper, snapping younger, your whip. Yeah. yeah. Pretty simple. We go out, we lift the hood, we check out the oil, and close the hood. It's all done. Yeah. Ross yeah. for boss. What did you, you say? A Ross for boss. Yeah. I voted for him because he could write the deficit off with a check. 
yeah. back then. A- hey, Alex. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I, I remember when uh, uh, Clinton was running for president and uh, you interviewed uh, Gore. And uh, and then at the end of the interview, you asked him, what kind of music do you like? And he said, Anya. <laughs> Did I, <laughs> wait a minute, did I interview Gore yeah. back then? When was that? Yeah, 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 because I remember I was driving up to San Francisco listening to it. Really? And, and he said he liked Anya. <laughs> and I thought, oh, Anya. no, I can't vote What's for What's wrong with Anya? Anya, Anya, Anya. Anya. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like saying that's Yanni. Yeah. Yanni, no, on you, on you. <laughs> that's something I don't know. I thought, oh, man. How many yeah, here still have your, on, uh, your, uh, your uh, Yanni records? Uh, how many? <laughs> Yanni, Anya. <laughs> Uh, with a harp. Who was who was what? What actress went with Yanni? And she always defended his music, and I always went. Eh, yeah. But uh, anyway, you know, you I mean, didn't have the kids. Hmm. So you didn't have kids. I, I li- we listen to Yanni all the time because my kids love them. Yanni? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah there was a kid down the street who liked them oh, too. Boy, oh boy. I'm yeah. talking Anya, not. Yanni. Uh, I, uh, Actually, Enya. 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 Whatever. Enya. Yeah. Enya. I think Robert. Well, so wait a minute. I, in, I. See, that's why I, I interviewed Al Gore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, you were interviewing him on the. I, I, I. That shows you how memorable he was. Yeah. You know. Global <laughs> warming really fucked you up. Well, it was a long time ago. <laughs> it was when he was running for VP with Clinton. Who? It was when he was running for VP okay. with Clinton. Talking about ninety-two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember interviewing him at the beginning of my career, Ted Kennedy, uh, uh, when he was just, we considered him the dumb brother of the other two, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but somehow he managed to last because he didn't get killed. So, yeah. you know, but the cancer got him. So, you know, the brain yeah. tumor, what have you. Hey, listen, this, so is, nice. this has been really nice, and everybody's been able to get their two cents worth in, and maybe yeah. even okay. three. Hey, thank you so much, everybody. I'm sorry if it was a little crabby tonight at the beginning. Rob, excuse me for questioning your levels. Uh, <laughs> uh, because my, uh, my these allergies are just killing me. Just killing me. And also, I was dealing with all kinds of technical stuff today, and it was just driving me crazy. But we'll be better tomorrow night. Uh, Charlie, thank you. It's been a good group tonight. Robert, thank you. Jeff, thank you. John, Said more tonight than you normally say. See, because you got a chance to get it in. Brian, good to see you. I suppose Adrian is in, in bed. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and Rob, thank you so much. Uh, that he's in front of his little radio station, which is they can go to what? What? Where do they go to hear your uh, retro rock? Retrorocks.net, and there's a link there. That's actually a Facebook page. Oh, okay. Go there and find out brian ludwig great having you here sorry i got rid of you at the beginning but i didn't want to i i forgot to put the set up the uh uh the waiting room and uh, uh, i didn't want people who might jump in and start talking while i was playing something else because it's on the same pod as when i play something else uh also thank you so much uh um uh, uh to you uh brie in kuala lumpur and kevin yeah. always great hearing from you You've been a great bunch tonight. Thank you so much for being part of my citizen panel. Would you please give a big wave goodbye? Oh, oh, there she is. There she is. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. (laughs) Okay. I love her. She is so terrific. Anyway, that's, uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll assemble a new one again tomorrow night. Next, uh, is the uh, intersection with, uh, uh, with Jack Bishop. Uh, He'll be starting right after this, and he'll be using Skype as his method of talking to you. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask.